Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Today the church does celebrate the fifth Sunday after Easter, which is also known as Rogation Sunday. And my sermon today is based upon the epistle appointed for today, coming to us from the first chapter of the epistle of St. James. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. My dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ, certainly if you are anything like me, certainly throughout your life at one point or another, there has been a misunderstanding of sorts. Whether you've said something and somebody has misconstrued your words or whether you've written something and they've not taken it the right way and thought you meant something totally different. Certainly, this is no, this is a very apparent when it comes to social media. Because again, as I stated, if you're anything like me, you've a time or two have written something that you take as very innocent, and the next thing you know, you're getting people writing negative or bad comments in regards to what you said. This has happened to me. I don't know if it's happened to you or not, but I'm. I read the comment and I'm thinking, no, no, wait, wait a minute. I, I didn't. That wasn't my intention at all. I didn't mean that at all. I bring this up because certainly I would imagine if Saint James, the author of the epistle that we read from today, and also Martin Luther were ever friends on Facebook, I imagine Martin Luther would have responded quite negatively to what Saint James wrote. The point that I bring, the reason why I bring this up is because Martin Luther, even though I'm being somewhat facetious, Martin Luther did have a very negative connotation of the epistle of St. James. And certainly he referred to it as the epistle of straw, meaning, of course, that it was nothing and it should have been certainly thrown out of the canon of the Bible. But again, as I go back to the point I was making a little bit ago, for the reason that Martin Luther did not like the epistle of St. James, again, nothing could be further from the truth. St. James, it seems to me, in my humble opinion, was just again writing just good old-fashioned common sense. Martin Luther and other similar critics who disliked the epistle of St. James they took the words of St. James out of context, again, in my humble opinion, and they decided that St. James was trying to write along the lines that we could work our way into heaven. Again, as I stated, in my humble opinion, nothing could be further from the truth. When St. James writes, as we heard in the 22nd verse of the first chapter, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Again, he's echoing the sentiment found in other parts of the New Testament, certainly as well. For we also read in the second chapter of St. Paul's epistle to the Romans, in the 13th verse, St. Paul writes, For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law are justified. So again, dear friends, in both St. James, what we read, and then also St. Paul, what I just read to you, both of them are emphasizing the fact, the difference, if you will, between hearing and doing. Hearing is different than doing. Certainly, again, we could come up with our own examples of what we're talking about, but if I if I hear something going out in the hallway, for just to use that as, a, as a, a loose analogy, so to speak, of what I'm referring to, if I'm sitting in a room and I hear something going on, a fight of sorts or a rumbling of sorts going on in the hallway, and I don't do anything about it, again, I, I'm hearing something, yes, but I'm not doing anything. The same can be said with us as Christians, quite frankly. Very often people criticize Christians for being hypocrites. And why do they do that? It is because, dear friends, again, in many instances, Christians are hypocrites, quite frankly. They go to church and they dress up real fine and they look all purtified on Sunday. They look real purty in their, in their fancy clothes and their nice hats. 
and they go to church on Sundays, and they might even yell out, Amen, Alleluia, brother. But yet, when they leave church, you wouldn't know that they were Christians at all by the way in which they lead their lives, by the way in which they treat other people, by the way in which they, they do the right thing. You wouldn't even be able to guess they were Christians. But on Sunday mornings, amen, hallelujah, they're wonderful Christians. You see, this is what St. James and St. Paul were trying to point out, that we not only have to hear the Word of God, we not only have to hear what God is saying to us, but then once we have heard, we have to do that which God is calling us to. Of course, St. Paul and St. James didn't make this up. They, of course, both got their understanding from our blessed Savior. And specifically, again, if we look in St. Luke's Gospel, in the 6th chapter and the 46th verse, we hear the following. This is, again, our Lord speaking. And why do ye call me Lord and do not? the things which I say. Again, even our blessed Savior was intrigued by the fact, how can you hear one thing but do the opposite? How can you hear God saying to you, love thou neighbor, but then you go out and turn around and gossip about your neighbor? You see, dear friends, it's one thing to hear, it's another thing to do. Doing is very is very difficult, excuse me. Hearing is somewhat easier, isn't it? But even in that scenario, we still have to make a point, as I've said in the past few weeks. We have to, as Christians, make a point to listen to what God is calling us to do. And then the second step is to... Once we do make a point to listen and hear what God is saying to us, then we have to carry out what God is asking us to do. If we look elsewhere again in this epistle of St. James, but this time one chapter further, this time in the second chapter and the 14th verse, we hear this. What doth it profit, my brethren, Though a man say he hath faith and hath not works, can faith save him? Again, this goes back again, dear friends, to what I was saying at the beginning of my sermon and what set Martin Luther off. Again, yes, there's a difference between faith and works. St. James was in no way saying that we, our works will save us. St. James was saying was in no way saying that we can work our way to heaven. St. James was in no way saying that works will replace faith. What St. James was pointing out was that faith comes from within. It's like a seed that is planted, and then it grows outward from there. In other words, the faith that we have in our heart grows outward and shows in our actions. That's the point that St. James was talking about. That's the, Saint ja that's the point that St. James was trying to emphasize. That's what St. James was trying to get you and I to think about. The seed is planted through our faith, yes, but then it grows outward and grows into our actions shows in the way in which we treat one another, shows in the way in which we show love to one another, shows in the way in which we do for our brothers and sisters who are less fortunate than we are. You see, dear friends, there was only one saving action that saved us from our sins, and that was the action of our blessed Savior, which he took upon the cross at the hill at Calvary. When he was nailed to that cross, you see, he took all our sins, yours and mine, he took all our sins upon his shoulder, and our sins, if you will, died on that cross. So you see, our Lord is the one that paid the price. But for us to be Christian, in other words, for us, you and I, to be Christ-like, 
we are called to follow in his footsteps to be more like him. And as a result, we will treat others around us through our actions. We live in a physical world and we are physical beings. So as such, our faith will take the format, if you will, of physical actions, the way in which we physically interact with one another, with those around us. It's one thing, you see, to sit in the pew and just listen to the beautiful music or listen to a beautiful sermon or appreciate the beautiful architecture of the church itself. It's one thing to sit in the pew. It's another thing, you see, to leave that church and to get stuck in a traffic jam and keep your cool and keep your calm and so on and so forth or the person that's nasty to us at the store, or the, or the co-worker that is mean to us, or the, the co-worker that is, is not doing their job, but then as a result, we have to do their job and ours. You, you see where I'm going with this. So what we need to do, dear friends, on this day is you and I as Christians, those you and I who are trying to be more Christ-like, we need to follow the advice of St. James and St. Paul, but specifically St. James, since we're focusing on his epistle today. But we need to follow the words of St. James so that we too can be doers of the word and not hear hearers only. We need to pray that God will put it in our hearts that we can do what he calls us to do, to do the work of him here in the church, in the world. Again, that's what the church was founded for. Our Heavenly Father doesn't need our help, but our Heavenly Father desires our help. You see the difference? He's the one that created the universe, so he really doesn't need my help. And yet, he's just pleased as punch, though, when I do my part. When I try to do my part by following him and treating others as he would treat them. So again, dear friends, just to emphasize, let us be doers of the word this day and every day so that we can listen to what God is saying, listen attentively, and then to do what he would have us do. God bless you, each and every one of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.